Luigi's Mansion 3. Man, it was such a blast to play it this weekend. It definitely did not disappoint, and I think I might just play it again sometime soon. I really love the hotel idea and the new mechanics put into the game, but to be honest, another thing I appreciated was the fact that the portrait ghosts made a return. So what's going on Jigsaw fam, Jigsaw Flex here, and the return of the boss ghosts in Luigi's Mansion 3 was the right idea. I'm really glad Next Level did this because including them seriously adds to the overall charm and story of the game. That is why in today's video, I'm going to be ranking all the boss ghosts from worst to best. This list will be based on how original the ghosts are and how much I enjoyed fighting them. I am specifically only including the mandatory floor boss ghosts, so this video won't include Polter Kitty or Bulasses. To add, this is also just my personal opinion, so by all means feel free to disagree if you want. And lastly, I'm going to be using gameplay from my live stream, so I hope my face isn't too distracting. Anyway, without further delay, let's get started. It's pretty much a no-brainer to start this list off with someone like Stuart. This guy was the first boss you encounter in the game. He didn't really do much to you besides try to hit you with suitcases, and that's pretty much it. After he strikes his attack, just shine in and you basically win. I honestly hate to put you dead last in this list dude, but I mean, someone has to be the weakest link and the developers decided that it had to be you. Sorry Steward. At 16, we have made Shambria, or however you say her name, of floor 5. Nothing really stuck to me while fighting this boss. It was pretty easy to figure out what to do because the game pretty much shows you that she ate Egad's luggage, and the most logical thing to respond was to slam her with your new plunger shot move. Nothing crazy or amazing, the game tried to make it harder by making you go from room to room for a bit, but yeah, it doesn't really actually make it harder or memorable. Another tutorial like boss to be honest. Now what I found great about Chef Soufflé was the fact that he was the first boss to make you think about using Guiji. Once you figure that puzzle out though, it gets super easy from there. Really, it's just a repeat of what you did to Shambria from floor 5. Use your plunger to get rid of the pan and you're all set. I like him a bit better though because at least he put on more of a fight like throwing fish at you, spinning and whatnot, and I thought battling in the chef's kitchen filled with other interactable food products was a pretty cool setting. Crawler can be described as that one kid we all thought was intimidating back in school, but once you actually get to know them, they were harmless and soft as a teddy bear. And that's the issue I had with him. He was a bit too soft for me. However, I like how you needed to solely rely on Guiji for this fight and dodge the water being squirted out of the gun. It teaches players to be cautious because you know, Guiji dies if he touches liquid. But yeah, Crawler is sadly another boss I found pretty boring, kinda tutorial-like. I adore his design and I did look forward to meeting him when I actually got to his floor, but my expectations fell short. Speaking of ghosts falling short, at number 13 we have DJ Phantasmagoria. The choreography was great by the goop ghosts and it was a nice touch that we had to capture the ones hiding the floor button before initiating the real boss. However, once you get to that point, it feels way too easy from here. It wasn't even a challenge to avoid those vinyl records that the DJ was throwing and all I had to do was continuously burst next to her to not only reveal her bald head, but so I can see her eyes and blind her with my stroll bulb. It was a pretty quick fight and very disappointing. It honestly felt like this was only here for filler before needing to actually tackle onto the final floor. It's a shame really. Up next, we have Dr. Potter, the ghost that grows monstrous plants with his watering can. The fight itself was quite unique and it would be actually much higher, but I just personally don't like the botany theme levels. So when I actually got to the boss, I wasn't exactly excited. I didn't even bother to try to build a good connection with the ghost. So uh, yeah, number 12 is extremely opinionated and many of you will probably disagree with me on this. However, some positives I like to share is that it was extremely satisfying cutting off the plant's neck with that one saw item, and I like the fact that this fight was like one of those situations where you had to think outside of the box while your life is on the line. Seriously, I didn't even realize the saw was in frame until I decided to stop and think about what's in my surroundings. A tier above Dr. Potter is McFrights, the king of the battle block theater like ghosts. Now, I personally didn't hate or like this fight. The reason I actually scored it a little bit on the lower end is because I kinda struggled with it. I couldn't get the strobe timing down and almost always got stabbed with his lance. Probably because I didn't get the attack cues down, so please don't hate me for this gameplay. Also, it doesn't really add too much to the previous formula when needing to use the plunger shot. The only real difference here is just timing your flash and then slamming. However, I did enjoy battling the Colosseum as it reminded me of one of those Spanish bullfighting scenarios and the arrows were a pretty good bonus to the challenge. But yeah, it was just alright. The dude at least put on a good show. However, if you're looking for a supersized show, try going up against a T-Rex and Ugg in the 9th floor of the game. At first, you fight a T-Rex and the goal is to shoot eggs at its ribcage. You exploit this by shooting an egg at its mouth first. This distracts it from covering its weak spot. 
However, it gets particularly hard when there's only one egg laying around and you don't have another one as bait. So enter Guiji being your ultimate distraction. It didn't occur to me to use Guiji at first, so I appreciated the game again in making me think in very dire situations. Reason why it's not as high in his list is because the Ugg fight was pretty generic. He just slams the ground pretty much like an angry caveman, because he actually is a caveman I guess, but it wasn't really that impressive. In my opinion, it should have been the opposite way around, Ugg first, then T-Rex. But overall, pretty solid, the challenge part was definitely the highlight. Coming at number 9, we have Godzilla and Morty. This one rocked because it actually looked like it was coming straight out of a movie. I thoroughly enjoyed Luigi fighting that kaiju ghost, and I thought it was super creative to make players again use Guiji to push that fiery ball of atomic energy back at the ghost. Though, I gotta say that presentation is definitely this fight's strongest suite. The fight itself? Eh, it was pretty easy to me. Maybe it's because I saw a bit of it during the Nintendo Treehouse presentation, so <laughs> whoops on my part. Plus, you don't actually fight Morty, which can be taken as good or bad. I kind of have a soft spot for him, despite killing him, but his role definitely made me appreciate this fight more. I think placing this at number 9 is definitely a good spot. It's around the middle where it deserves. I couldn't put it much higher because I personally think the other ones I'm about to mention are just as fun and creative, but have more edge on the challenge department. So speaking of challenge, here we finally get to see Serpsy, the boss ghost of 10F. Let me just say that this was probably one of the hardest fights in the game for me. I was stuck for about 2-3 to three minutes trying to figure out what to do. Luckily, people on stream recommended me on sucking the sand of the head Serpsy was hiding in. However, I was in for a rude awakening when I saw I also had to avoid the serpents coming out of the head before actually revealing the boss herself. This whole process took forever, and it doesn't help that she has multiple attacks up her sleeve. I definitely put Serpsy higher, but unfortunately, I thought other fights were more enjoyable than hers. Honestly, harder doesn't always mean better. The huge spike in difficulty definitely lowered the ranking a bit, despite it being fun and thrilling. Okay, so here's something you never expected to return, the evil piano from Mario 64. Well, not really obviously, but it does kind of resemble it. After dealing with Steward, Chambria, and Crawler, I was kind of scared thinking that the rest of the boss ghosts were going to be super easy and boring. However, the fight with Amadeus, Wolfgeist, again, I don't know how to say these people's names, proved me wrong. The piano part was definitely impressive. When it was doing those diving attacks, I didn't expect it to read some of my movements. I also enjoyed that it had other attacks such as shooting several piano keys and making me use bursts to jump over its shockwaves. This fight makes you work to get to the ghost, kinda like Serpsy, except a little less tedious and just overall cooler in my opinion. They actually both have similar fight scenarios if you think about it. So from here, I think it comes down to personal preference. You guys might like Serpsy more, I get it. Next up, we have who is probably Biff Atlas' best friend, Johnny Deep End. Some of you may be wondering, dude, why do you have him so high? He only has 60 health. Well guys, you see, I was a sucker for how you needed to expose his weakness. And to do that, you needed Guiji to sneak to the other side of the pool, to turn off the water, and to drain the whole damn thing. I failed a few times because Johnny here was perceptive enough to notice Guiji. He did not ever hesitate to shoot water at him and kill him whenever he ran past cover. So with some thinking, I decided to shoot a volleyball back at his face, causing him to become dizzy so I'd have time to turn the water wheel. I also like how Johnny resembles a pitcher in baseball, making sure the man on base doesn't steal. It's honestly the little touches that get me on this one. A better touch than that, however, is the rubber ducky floaties that you get to ride on in the game. Riding these in the boiler works was essential to progress, and this idea does not disappear when you start fighting the mechanic ghost, Clem. This particular fight was intriguing because you really needed to master steering on that duck float. And I don't know, I guess the poltergust itself can't withstand water, or because Luigi can't swim with that thing on. But yeah, learning to steer this thing is key because Clem will chase after you with his fan and throw rubber mines. You would think you need to suck the fan off of his hands, but instead, you actually need to wait until he gets dizzy, and then you start making your moves. You suck his float, then you shoot him into the spikes, making him unconscious and land. And it's basically the end from there. This is just another boss where I thought the concept was super creative and unique. It's higher than Deep End because the boss to me was harder and I appreciate the game in making me really concentrate on my movement. So pretty much all of the ghosts on this list so far have been pretty human in terms of anatomy. For number 4, let's switch things up with Captain Fishhook, the dude with the barrels. This one for sure is super original and timing is key in winning this fight. It was definitely challenging trying to get him to eat the barrels that I shot using the Poltergeist G00 and that's pretty good. I shouldn't be able to aimlessly shoot barrels and win automatically. To add, it was a nice touch when he tilted the ship where you had to think quickly on what to grab onto because if you didn't, oh boy, you'd for sure get gobbled up when you fell. Let's also not forget to mention that this shark has complete power to possess the ship. That idea alone is pretty awesome. 
So uh, yeah, this fight is so high on this list because of its creativity, forgivable difficulty, and man was it just so cool to play on. The three sister magicians, Nikki, Lindsay, and Ginny fit perfectly for the number 3 spot. Now the only thing I would have changed in this fight was probably how they attacked. It was relatively easy to avoid the cards that they throw at you, especially if you just burst. Other than that, this fight was fantastic. The first part was no sweat, but the second and especially third part was way harder. Implementing bombs inside of hats was such a good choice because it forces players to pay attention to the ones hiding the sisters. And let me just say that the third part was the craziest. Not only do you have to choose the right hat that's constantly spinning, but now that the lights turn off every split second or so, making it more difficult for you to follow. It's also freaking harder to avoid those shooting cards at the same time. However, what makes this fight more memorable are the girls' personalities. They just seem to be fun individuals showing happy, surprising, and disgusted emotions. By far, one of my favorites. So taking the number 2 spot is Helen Gravely herself. This is yet another fight where it's mandatory to use Guiji. However, instead of just strictly using him or making him as bait, the player needs to switch between him and Luigi pretty much the whole entire time. The key to effective victory is disabling those colored walls of energy. If those aren't off, it will be very difficult for Luigi to suck the health off of Gravely because of the limited space. Guiji's role is to go underground and disable those colored walls of energy. However, you gotta keep in mind that you still need to protect Luigi above the surface, so this means bursting over lasers, running away from the boss's attacks, and of course avoiding those colored laser walls that you're trying to disable. It's a lot of stuff, and it kinda gets difficult when you don't notice that the underground is flooding, so you find yourself needing Guiji to start all over again. It was definitely a challenge, and I still remember dying to this. This fight really tested my skills that I learned in the beginning of the game, so if you don't know any of these, you're a goner, and I really appreciated that. And lastly guys, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, King Boo, renowned for fighting at rooftops. The King Boo fight is by far the most challenging fight in the game. I'll admit, it was a bit annoying, dying 3 times or so, but it was all worth it. I enjoyed being bombed, enjoyed being electrocuted, enjoyed being... Okay, a little bit too far, but you get the point. It was fun, it was challenging, and I adore King Boo as the main antagonist in the series. Also, this is by far the best fight yet. The first game's final battle was pretty cool and all, but to be honest, it was only because he was in the Bowser suit and Dark Moon. I honestly can't remember what that even was. Luigi's Mansion 3 did an amazing job with the final stage. Hard, yes, but it's supposed to be hard. The attacks didn't bore me one bit, and it got 10 times more thrilling when he started using Double Team. Similar to the Helen Gravely fight, you have to pretty much use everything that you learned. Burst when he does shockwaves, exhaust so you don't get hit by those falling bombs, and use Guiji to help you slam him to his demise. And just like those Ghost Sisters, when he multiplies, you need to keep track of who's the real one by searching through his physical changes. So yeah, the King Boo boss fight is by far the best fight in the game, in my opinion. Well, there you have it guys, all floor boss ghost fights ranked from my worst to best. Comment down below if you guys agree with this list, whether it be for some, all, or comment down below if you disagree. I'd love to hear what you guys think. In the next one, I'll be tackling yet again another ranked Luigi's Mansion 3 video, but this time, it'll be on all the theme floors in the game. If you thought this video was enjoyable or helpful, feel free to drop a like and consider subscribing for more Luigi's Mansion 3 content or just Nintendo content in general. I've been Kirk, also known as Jigsawflex, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace!